come to our trains. That is what they should be doing. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Train Simulator 2017. This is my third stream. I have been doing just streams lately, much to my, I want to say surprise, but it is pretty fun. Mm T. All right. So this is technically episode 14 because my live stream number two was episode 13. I definitely feel like doing some ECML London to Peterborough action tonight. And I think what I decided was I was going to try to do a scenario. I think I was going to try to do one of the workshop scenarios that I've downloaded. I think there was a stopping service, in fact, that I wanted to give a try to. And the question is, which one was it? I believe it's one that I've tried in the past. It may have been one of these two. Yes, that's a great description. O D, excellent. Class three six five, London to Peterborough. The description tells me absolutely nothing, but let's give it a try. This should be a fun challenge. I suspect what it's going to actually do is just make it difficult for me to stay on time. I suspect that's why it's four out of five little difficulty ticks. We'll see how it goes. You'll notice today I'm driving an EMU. I am not driving a steam train. I do feel I need to do a little bit more practicing before I drive steam trains, although shout out to JMO444, who is here once again for his extremely helpful feedback last time. I was playing in easy mode, so I didn't actually have to do things like keep an eye on the water or the coal, but I did have to keep an eye on the pressure, and he helped me figure out what I should be doing there. I also noticed, speaking of train simulator news, that train simulator world's new uh, Great Western mainline scenario is coming out soon. It's now available for pre-order. I think it's estimated to come out in about four or five weeks in the middle of August. And that's looking absolutely beautiful. I hope that they've optimized Train Simulator World since I last tried it because it did not do super well on my otherwise very powerful desktop computer when I tried the CSX Heavy Haul beta back in the day. Back in the day being about December or so. So... One hopes that they've optimized it since then. So here we are, East Coast Main Line. Good morning, driver. We've taken over from another driver to continue the schedule for the 0550 London King's Cross service from Peterborough. Please open the doors and allow boarding, and then continue on to London. The timetable is tight, and you'll be leaving a little late. Doors are open. Let us set ourselves into step one, all forward, step one braking, and get ready to go. Since we're waiting for our passengers to board, let's also get some headlights going. All right. We are not starting at Peterborough. Description notwithstanding, we are starting at Hitchin, just beyond the split off to Cambridge, which is right over here. I see we have another parked train there. Hopefully, we'll be seeing some AI action on this particular workshop scenario that I've grabbed. Anyway, let me hop into my train. Doors are closed. Let's go. So this is supposed to be a relatively tight service in terms of schedule. So let's see how that works out for us. We are in England, so I need to remember that my signals are on the left, not on the right. We have the highball. Let's go. Class 365 EMUs today. I see we have a four car train. This can shift pretty well. Not quite like the class 801 I was driving at the very end of my stream number two. But still can shift well enough that I need to keep my eyes on the speed limits and make sure we do minimal speeding. This is not a career scenario, so there is no score. So I'm not going to discover that I got negative a billion at the end if I do speed a little bit. But I think professionalism is still to be strived for. Is something for which I should strive? Yes, I like that better. Let us be grammatically correct. Only steam for you? Yeah, that's pretty much the opposite of my philosophy. Also, our next station is in 3.73 miles, Stevenage. We can get up to 75 now. Diesel driving is a lot of fun. I feel so much more comfortable driving diesels than I do steam trains. Unicorn, you can hitch a ride on my train. We're about to speed. Yep, I saw that just before it started happening. Luckily, the brakes on this train are also quite good. Let me also move the mouse from away the, from the middle of my screen. You can't see it, but I can, and it is annoying. So 
so it is early in the morning. This is our 550 service from Peterborough. We got to hitch in at about 635, so it is now 637 in the morning. Far too early for any human to be awake in my opinion. It's been a long time since I had to be awake at 637 in the morning. That would not be fun. It's more likely what time I'm going to bed. Well, it's an exaggeration, but not by much. And it makes sense that I would be drinking tea, given our setting for today's scenario. Let's see if we can get right up to that 75, because we're already going to be, eh, four seconds late. There we go. 75.1 miles an hour. As we roll around the slow lines on the East Coast Main Line, we are coming south from, I mean, the lines go up to York and beyond. So we are heading south towards London, two miles to Stevenage keep that speed up as we enjoy the early morning sunlight slanting across the rails. There we have an HST. Good morning, HST. It's quite a long HST, too. A little bit more speed. Speed! We have a double amber on the fast line, so we wonder perhaps if there is a non-stop service, a limited service at uh, Stevenage. We shall see when we get there. Although by the time we get there at our slow pace, it will probably have headed off towards London. But we have ahead nothing of particular interest. How simple diesels are. Huge cars. Yeah, depending on the diesel. They're not too bad. Not too bad at all. On some of the older ones, you have to be a little bit more intelligent with your use of air versus dynamic brakes and locomotive versus train brakes, but for the most part, it is pretty straightforward, luckily. Pretty sure a message just disappeared from the chat. I didn't know that was a thing. We are coming up on Stevenage. Let's start doing some braking. As you know, maybe, I like to enter stations at about 37 miles an hour for reasons that are a mystery to everyone including myself, but that is just the number that seems to work out well for me. I need to reacquaint myself with the actual stopping distance on the class 365, so I should have... Eh, yeah, actually that wasn't bad. I'm, I'm going to tell myself that wasn't bad at all. In fact, that was a little bit too much, because we're down to 27 and just kind of coasting in Stevenage. Alright, now we can put ourselves into like step 2 or even... Oh, there was the 4 car marker. Sorry guys, you'll have to walk a little bit up to our train. Full service. 10 miles an hour. Yeah, I should have stopped a little bit earlier. Closer to the middle of the platform. That's all right. Our passengers can get a little extra exercise today. Doors are open. Here we are at Peterborough. Excuse me, at Stevenage. I don't know what I'm on about. Stevenage. Look at that train there. Fast to Faversham. 68 minutes from St. Pancras. looks like it's winter time not snowy but the trees are certainly bare today and that wind is blowing I'm surprised that it would be winter time with the Sun that high in the sky at 637 in the morning there we go there we go indeed I hope our passengers are hurrying up because we have places to be places to be people to see and things to do we got here early so that's good all right why are you rest in peace me unicorn should have released my air brakes a little bit early, but that's all right. Come on. There we go. As you may know, if you know trains or have watched my past videos, the reason I should have released, started decreasing the braking a little bit earlier is air brakes work by using air pressure to keep the brakes away from the wheels. When you brake hard, you release that air pressure, allowing the brakes to touch the wheels in order to make them go away from the wheels again you have to build up enough pressure to pull them away and the reason for that of course is if something punctures your brake lines or if you lose compressor power or something the failure method is the brakes go against the wheels not go away from the wheels and you can never stop the train so there we go um i did not watch you thomas as a kid i did not really watch much television as a kid i did have a number of thomas the tank engine books that were frequently in circulation as things that I was reading, for sure. And I had many other train books to read, model trains to play with, starting with a Duplo train, some Remco model trains. It was this 
relatively inexpensive as far as I know, little plastic train set, but it was a huge amount of fun. I love my Remco trains. Eventually I got Lego trains, um, I had wind-up trains, eventually I got an HO set that I would set up on a board, like a, you know, a big piece of plywood in my apartment. Eventually, eventually I got a Santa Fe, Santa Fe? Santa Fe. Uh, diesel end scale set that I had great fun with and these days I am working on recollecting trains in fact today I just purchased up on eBay another Acela business class car to add to my collection if you stopped by Chemitech you may have seen where I am swiftly amassing hello class 365 on the fast lines swiftly amassing ever more Acela trains I've succeeded in getting a full real Acela consist of end scale trains what all right, I'm speeding, let's fix that. Um, and one of my ongoing kind of building projects is to make them actually work like the real one. In other words, have the motors be in the power cars instead of as this Bachmann design train has, the motors in the cafe car and the power cars just be dummies. So that is an ongoing project if you wanna check that out. Oh dear, we have to stop at Nebworth. Oh, we're gonna pull Nebworth. Yeah, bye Nebworth. See you later. Ladies and gentlemen, if you need to stop at Nebworth today, we ask that you stop at the next station instead. Our engineer today has decided that you don't actually have to go to Nebworth. We invite you to get off at Wellwyn North instead. So yeah, yeah, I just raced past the station. This is what happens when I try to remember all of my model trains. Well, I drive a train. I don't know, I'm tempted to go back, but I don't want to fail the schedule. So let's just assume that everybody who's at Nebworth didn't actually want to get off at Nebworth, and everybody, sorry, everybody at Nebworth didn't actually want to get on. They wanted to get on the train after me, and everybody who was on the train did not want to get off at Nebworth. There we go. Those books were the books that Thomas the Tank Engine was based on. Yes, indeed, I believe that. All right, so remember, we're in a stopping service. We're not on an HST or class 801 which means we cannot simply set ourselves to go as fast as possible and assume that we never have to stop again. So there's a 70 coming up, followed by a 115. Let's just keep ourselves nicely under the 70 as we go through the 70 zone. And then we'll be able to get right back up for that 115. The class 365 cannot go 115 miles an hour as far as I recall. I think the top speed is somewhere south of 100 miles an hour, but we should get a little bit of speed in there. Our next station is Wellwood North in just under two miles though. So let's not speed up too much in that 115 or we'll just speed straight past well we know. We just entered a two track zone, so any we're gonna go over one of my favorite viaducts in train simulator. Uh, and in fact in trains. Oh now we're in a 125. It didn't really warn me about that. Pretty sure that looked like a 70. Here's our train. Yes, train viaduct, everything is great. Everything is beautiful. We'll just ignore the fact that we totally passed by Nebworth. Oh, that wasn't actually my favorite viaduct. I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll get there. Don't worry, we'll get there. Get a little bit more speed up as we head towards Wellwood North. Since we are still in that 115, we'll just have to remember to actually then stop again once we get to Wellwood North. One mile to go to Wellwood. Heading down a slight decline, 1 in 200. Nothing too bad. But maybe when we get to that light, we'll want to lay off the, well, I'll already lay off the accelerator, but let's start putting on a little bit of brakes once we get to that light that's in a fifth of the mile. That signal, I should say. Ding! AWS says A-OK. -okay. Signal is inexplicably slightly to the left there. We'll put us in step one as we roll down the slip towards Wellwood North. Platform one. Hello, Class 801. A little bit more braking. Let's see how well we can stop here. 51, 50, 49, 48, 47, 46. Yep, this is coming down perfectly. Beautiful. Step two, we'll go back to full service. Let's see what we got here. Platform one. The four car marker might actually just be at the end of this platform. Uh, pier, pier, pier. There's the S car marker. All right, we'll just stop the S car marker because that is what you do. Yeah, close enough. Step two. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we apologize for the earlier inconvenience. If you wanted to get off at Nebworth, we invite you to instead detrain here at Wellwood North. And we've gotten here massively ahead of time because we didn't actually stop at Nebworth, so that's exciting. I'm pretty sure that it was indeed Nebworth that Moleman 978 blew past. Um, there was a name for what you call it when you blow past a station. I thought it was pulling a Nebworth. So it may not just be me that's inept at stopping at Nebworth. We are on a slight decline, so I'll keep those brakes on step two. We don't want our train to start imperceptibly rolling away from us. A one in 3.30 as we are on Wellwind North Platform 1. We have that nice little overpass there. In fact, with the sun glinting off it nicely, since we are here in so much extra time. Let's head up here and take a look. Well, I'll have to be extra tall. I'm, I'm tall, so I'll be tall. There's our train. Hooray. Screenshot? Not a great screenshot, but I'll take it. Uh, not Control P. Control S. Control P is for our Unreal Tournament. So, my recollection is Wellwind Garden City is next, which would make sense, all things considered. Let's double check. That's the wrong one. Uh, let's get going and then consider things. Train? There we go. Off you go, train. Hope we don't run any reds while we do this maneuver. Gotta love the two-tone horn, too. And off we go. Networth. Yeah, close enough. It's K-N-E-B-W-O-R-T-H, but yeah, close enough. And notch four. Goodbye, train. <laughs> Alrighty, so we'll keep the... Keep an eye on the HUD there while our train speeds away. So next is Wellwind Garden City, followed by Finsbury Park, and then King's Cross. Oh, wow. So we actually get to skip quite a number of stops. Um, yes, Wellwind Garden City in 1.4 miles. Everything coming along nicely. Uh, let's keep an eye on that 30 mile an hour zone that's coming up in a mile. That has to be where our tracks diverge back into, nope, huh. I still am going to claim that, that must be where the tracks diverge back into more tracks. I seem to remember that there's a bit of a yard to the north of Weldon Garden City. Let's see if that's actually accurate or not. Going to do a little coasting here before we throw the brakes on. Uh, yeah, I'm going to start throwing the brakes on now, as a matter of fact. It looks like a beautiful winter morning in England. I wish I was there. Step one. Do I need to go to step two? I'm going to go to step two because that 30 mile an hour zone is coming up mighty soon. Are we gonna make it? Are we gonna make it? I think we're gonna make it. I think we're gonna make it just fine. We are certainly diverging over to the left though. There is no way that's not a thing. I will lay off the brakes a little bit. 34, 33, 32, 31, 30. Beautiful. Put ourselves back in step one. Yep, we are heading over back onto the slow lines here. While our friends, the fast line trains, can continue straight down the middle. Are we going to go all the way over to the side? No, we're not. That makes sense. We'll just ease in here at a nice 29 miles an hour. Now we're back in a 75 mile an hour zone, but there's no use accelerating now. Chat is dying, is it now? Oh, yes, in the sense that nobody's saying anything. Yes. Hopefully not in terms of technical difficulties. So let's put ourselves into full service here and find a good place to stop. There's an S car marker. There is a six to eight car marker, which means I went past the four car marker. Man, today's not a great day. Today's not a great day for train stopping with where they are supposed to. Let's see how far I missed the four car marker by. There's the platform two marker. There's the th three, four car marker. Yep, so we overshot by half a train. Eh, a third of a train, no big deal. Yeah, about a third of the train. A car and a two-thirds. Slash me dies. Don't do that. Don't do that indeed. All right, let's reduce our brakes slightly. Maybe we can look at the class 365 and say something about it. I don't have my Wikipedia page pulled up on the class 365. I had it pulled up the last time I drove the class 365. Our first car here is called the Fenman. There's our first class compartment right at the front. The remainder being coach class in beautiful First Capital Connect livery. I don't love the logo, but I do like the 
blue to navy blue fade with the maroon and white stripes and the yellow on the end. That's quite a handsome livery. I can't complain about that. Obviously, I have never ridden these trains in real life since I have not yet been to England or Britain or any part of the United Kingdom. But one day, one day I shall. That's the goal. That's the plan. Nothing interesting is happening on Chematech, presumably. You know, other than you guys being here. Done about 90 with Blue Peter. Very nice. Very nice indeed. The signal there says we're feathering back over to the right, so I shouldn't go to past 25. I did. All right. Yep. So now we're heading on to the fast lines. So our next platform is... Our next station, excuse me, is Finsbury Park, platform two in a whopping 18 miles. So let's wait till our. Oh, all right, all right, all right. If this was. There we go. Now we can just speed! Throw it into full power. So we are on the fast lines and we have a nice easy run to go until we get to Finsbury Park. And we're doing a massively good time of being on time. I want to say that speeding past Nebworth probably has something to do with that. Just guessing. Just guessing that that was related in some way. I don't know how, but it seems like it might be correlated. What's wrong with the Blue Peter? Wait, are you telling me there's a train simulator route or piece of rolling stock with a bug in it? Because I don't believe you. What was the problem that you encountered? T. Sorry, I should have said that like speed. T. We have nobody sitting in that little jump seat there today to drive along with us. We do have some nice scenery that we're rolling past. Fields and farmland gradually giving way to suburbia as we head south towards London. I think I'm going to give us a little bit of a view above this train. Maybe alongside. Go for it. Now, you may have, you may remember if you are an avid watcher of my videos that we are on the down fast lines. Down meaning that we, sorry. Oh, now I need to remember how this goes exactly. Hold on, hold on. Let me check my memory one moment. So up is right, 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 right. I got it now. Up is towards a major location. So we are on the up lines towards London down is away from a major location so in this case up is actually south and down is north yes if we were on the london's brighton route it would be the opposite down would be south the more geographically logical way and up would up is north down south yep up is away. but because london is still considered the center and because that's the way the tracks are named up is towards the Point of interest, we are on the up line, so we're on the up fast lines at the moment. The up slow lines being to our left, and the in order first down fast and then down slow lines over to our right. And there's a clear class 365 that we need to honk at. Full throttle made it not able to stop. What do I have on my PC? Great question. So I have a K series i5 CPU, I forget exactly which one but it has served me very well over the last three or four years. I have 16 gigabytes of RAM. I have an AMD 6970 graphics card. Um, it is a three, uh, sorry, a 6950 that's been unlocked to be a 6970. It is a six output video card, so I drive five monitors and a projector with it at when I have everything running. I haven't run the projector much lately. I think I actually need to get myself a new projector, but. Anyway, um, I forget exactly what motherboard I have, but it's a good one. I want to say a Z77. That sounds about right to me. Um, what else is interesting? I have a massive, absolutely massive uh, case for my computer. Massive. I think it's a thermal take case. I have five monitors, as I mentioned. Four 22-inch monitors and one 27-inch monitor arranged in a way that works very nicely for both coding and gaming. There's some screenshots on Chematech, screenshots I say, photographs on Chematech if you're curious what my setup actually looks like. 
I can play Train Simulator, at least Train Simulator 2017, spanned across all of my monitors when I'm playing without streaming or recording, but as I believe I've mentioned in one of my recent videos, um, I cannot spread the game across all of my monitors when I am streaming or recording. My computer just cannot keep up. Uh, maybe if I get myself a new video card. If Train Simulator World continues to be as terribly intensive on resources as it seems to be, then I might actually have to do that sooner rather than later. I got my video card in, I want to say it was about 2011 or 2012 at this point. It was quite some time ago. So, you know, five or six years, that's about about the age that I expect for a video card. It's for quite a number of years now, I've done a few random things. Every once in a while, my computer will blue screen and crash or just randomly black screen and crash. Um, and I suspect my video card is at fault. So it's probably something to do sooner rather than later. Um, financially, that seems like a reasonable thing for me to do as well at the moment. I'm not, I feel like that would be okay. Um, what else? What else can I tell you about my computer? I have a beautiful uh, blue snowball, sorry, yes, ice blue snowball microphone. Uh, that I got for Christmas. It was on my Christmas wish list in order to make just this easier. Uh, YouTube videos, as well as, you know, like recording videos for my startup, but phew, who cares about that? I have a very nice code keyboard with the Cherry MX Clear buttons, which I love, switches I should say. Um, I have a 5.1 surround sound system in my room, although I need to fix it up. It is set up so that I can switch it between my whole room and just the little area that I use for my computer so you can get you know full room surround sound or just for my computer surround sound um, what else can I tell you that's interesting 1000 watt power supply um, many 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 hard drives um, I think my computer has a total of just under 10 terabytes of storage in raw numbers of disks although I have uh, the two four terabyte drives in a mirrored RAID arrangement so that if one of them dies, I will have a backup. Um, where are we rolling through now? We are going too fast for me to see. Yeah, hold on, we can solve this. We just rolled through. Uh, Hadley Wood, that makes sense. Um, one more thing I was gonna say, oh yes, I have a 512 gigabyte SSD as my boot drive. Um, unfortunately, Train Simulator is far too large to fit on there with everything else I have installed. So my train simulator roots at least are on a spinning piece of rust, which is why I get those little lag spikes every once in a while. You should read up on the mechanical switches. I love mechanical keyboards. I got the one, so the clears, the Cherry MX clears are nice and tactile. You can feel the click, but they don't make such a blaringly loud click sound as some of the other switches. Um, I picked that both for my own sanity, for the fact that I live in an apartment, and for past and future significant other miss, you know, my experience is that significant others, especially if they're trying to relax or read or do projects or sleep, don't love if you bang away at a keyboard. The co-founder of my startup, Elf Prince 13, who is a chemotech administrator and occasional participant in random internet-y things that we do, has the same keyboard, but with the Cherry MX I think he has the browns, which are equally tactile, but so loud. And his wife occasionally complains about that. So yes, you should definitely look into the code keyboard. I strongly recommend it. I know that Geek Boy, who inexplicably is not showing up. I'm gonna yell at him for not showing up. Uh, he has the clears as well. He loves that same, exact same keyboard actually. And Eames, E-E-M-S, has also the exact same keyboard. So. It comes highly recommended by the Graphic Calculator Programming Community. How it comes recommended by the Train Simulator Community is something I'm not as sure of. But if in my videos or my live streams you hear me banging away at my keyboard, clack, clack, clacking, that's why. Because I do tend to have a heavy hand, even though mine is the less noisy version. Oh, I think we're near Alexandra Palace. I think that's the case. I'm a little bit rusty in my East Coast mainlining. I did spend a great deal of last year frequently coming back to the East Coast Main Line. This year, I mean, I haven't had much time for Train Simulator in general with everything that's been going on in my life, professionally, academically, and personally. I'm gonna actually pause here and see how correct I am about that. Where do we have the sign? There we go. We are at New Southgate, okay. Either I jumped the gun or I missed it by a station. 
our weird IKEA colored little store over there. It might actually be an IKEA. Maybe IKEA gave Train Simulator a, a few pounds to, you know, make that be eye-catchingly colored as an IKEA. We're still speeding along at 100. We are entering a 95. I caught that just as it happened. Let's put ourselves down to 95 and not worry about the points we just lost. All right, all right, that's enough speed loss. We can get some acceleration on again. And we keep rolling along. We have 3.15 miles until Finsbury Park, platform two. Very nice. The Flying Scotsman is a beautiful train. So I was watching, I occasionally have found myself in recent years when I need a bit of a laugh and not to think too hard or too seriously, watching Rewatching, I should say, old episodes and series of Top Gear. Let's see what we got here. Hold on. I will tell you the rest of the story in a moment. This is... Here's Alexander Palace. All right, I was one station too early. So now I'll have to remember that for next time. It comes... It goes New Southgate and then Alexander Palace heading south. Um, anyway, in this Top Gear special, they were racing the Tornado against an old car and an old motorcycle. The names and models, both of which I forget, but I certainly remember the Tornado. I even think I might remember the number. I think it was 60153 possibly, but it was a England's, at one point when they filmed that episode, it was England's most recently built train. Here comes Fifth Ray Park, by the way. I'm, I'm watching out for that, don't worry. Um, and I'm also watching out for that 90 mile an hour zone. Um, even though it was a steam train, Nobody bothered to preserve any of the original set of that particular type of steam train. So volunteers found the plans, got all the necessary materials and funding together, and built a brand new steam train. So that was pretty cool, pretty cool indeed. Um, I believe there's a similar effort underway in the U.S. with a steam train that people want to rebuild, but the last time I checked, they were massively under their funding goal for that. AWS says, be aware of the speed and of stopping. I am so aware. If I can remember which episode of Top Gear that was, I will definitely recommend that you go back and watch because it was a lot of fun. Jeremy Clarkson, from whom I have stolen the speed, saying was the fireman and had a first-hand experience. I mean, at least the parts where they were filming. I have to always remind myself that Top Gear is not exactly a reality show, but he certainly appeared to be shoveling coal at quite a rate. We're staying on the fast lines here. There's a 365 over to our right. There's an HST. Give a bit of whistle for the HST. Let's give ourselves a little more braking. Slow down for Finsbury Park Platform 2. And let's see how well I can find a four-car marker to actually stop at this time. Finsbury Park is not a very long platform, so I expect to see it in the near future. There's my platform marker. A little less braking. Let's do this one right. A little bit less braking. Really, this one you're gonna give me an S car marker for? Yeah, 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 I know. I see the double yellow, double amber. There's the three car marker, there's the S car marker, uh, the four car marker, rather. Come on, full service. No emergency, just full service. Alrighty, I was a little bit early on that. I stopped closer to the three car marker, but not bad, not bad at all. Not that camera, this camera. Yeah, I stopped halfway between the three car marker and the four car marker. Eh, I'm pretty happy with that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Finsbury Park. Our next and final station stop will be London King's Cross. If you are not going as far as London King's Cross, then this would be your time to disembark. Hello, ma'am. It is 7.05 a.m. It's a undoubtedly brisk morning in England, although this guy doesn't seem to have gotten the message in his fedora and short sleeve shirt. He's not wearing the neck beard. I expect to go with that hat. Disappointing, sir. You don't have your neck beard. Got a couple of blocks of flats over here. Some random apartments. Yep, we're definitely square in suburbia now. This looks a lot like Queens. Oh, hey, we should get going. And off we go. We need to be at King's Cross in six minutes. I think we should be fine with that. We have a double amber there, so let's not start accelerating too enthusiastically. We're presumably following another service into King's Cross. So that means we are just cleared to the next signal. I'm gonna keep careful watch on our signals. I don't see the next one. Mm, I mean, we're not gonna be able to go past 65 soon anyway. Let 
Let's see what we got there. Do I see a single amber or is that a red? Is that red for us? I can't tell. Dang. Uh, good, I'll lay off. I want to say the amber is for us. And the red is for the... What? What is that red for? Ah, the track that's showing us. Okay, okay, we're alright for now. We can get a little bit more speed up. It's estimating that we're going to be 44 seconds late to King's Cross, which seems unlikely to me. Hello, class 365. Gonna blow my horn at you, too. We're in the 65 now, heading towards the 40 mile an hour zone. We're just about at 40 miles an hour. Um, let's keep an eye out for that signal, though. Ooh, that looks like our red. That looks like it could definitely be our red. Yeah. Yeah, that looks like our red. Let's be aware of that. And I hear an HST accelerating somewhere. AWS? Yep, AWS. All right, I overcooked that slightly. I hear you, HST. Hello, HST. Um, why are we in? That was weird. Did we get emergency break in? I didn't notice. I think we did. Hello, class 801. Just gonna edge us forward a little bit towards this red signal. Wait, that you, oh, yes. So, um, James May in the car, unfortunately won. Um, as always with Top Gear, it's kind of contrived. Uh, Jeremy Clarkson in the train came second, and Richard Hammond in the motorcycle did not really finish the race because he kept breaking the motorcycle. Um, however, the train far beat the car to where they were going. I think it was York because they were actually going up the ECML. All right, now we should think about stopping at this red here. Stopping at the red. Um, it might have been, they might have gone, all right, now we got the amber and a feather off to the left. It might have been past York that they were going, but it was certainly up the ECML. Yep, yep, true story. True story indeed. Let's get right up for that 40 because we have time to make up. We're still estimated to be 44 seconds late to King's Cross. I'm not sure what that's all about. Feather off to the left onto the slow lines. Ah, so we are going to follow that HST and that's what that was all about. That is indeed what that was all about. We had to let that HST go past. Uh, let me do a quick Googling on my laptop. Top Gear Tornado. Top Gear Race to the North was the name of the episode. It was, uh, what episode was it in? They're not doing a good job in this Wikipedia entry of telling me as I try to drive a train and read Wikipedia at the same time. But, ladies and gentlemen, we do not recommend that you try to read Wikipedia and drive a train at the same time. You might miss AWS warnings, you might miss speed limits, and you might roll into other trains, so please don't do that. Um, it was between a Jaguar XK120 a Vincent Black Shadow locomotive, both cars, uh, both the gas vehicles were from the 1940s, and 60163 Tornado. I think I was pretty close on the number for that, actually. Um, it was a 400-mile journey from London to Edinburgh. They were going to Edinburgh. It was season 13, series 13, by British Numbering, episode 1. So I do recommend going and watching that. I would link you to the YouTube versions of that. Oh, that's a red signal. That's a red signal. Oh, that's not so bad. Oh, that's not so bad. We're gonna spad, we're gonna spad, we're gonna spad, we're gonna spad. Oh, we're feathering. Ha, ah, not spadding. Well then, that almost went really badly for us. But we got switched over to a different track, so now everything's great. Oof, that was scary. All right, definitely not gonna read Wikipedia while I try to drive a train, because I will miss signals. Could have used a little warning that we were not going to be running into that red signal, though. Thank you, train. Also, plenty of HST action around us based on the sound, even though I'm not seeing them. Heading into the Gasworks Tunnel, line D, and then presumably way over to the right. Yep, I know, I know. I know the AWS. Now, we have a single amber there. Okay, so we're cleared all the way into the platform, I believe, because there's a signal. Yep, all the way into the platform. 15-mile-an-hour zone coming up the remainder of the way into the platform. So let's get down for that 15. More quickly, please. Much more quickly. Now we should be good. Yeah, the Tornado is an incredible steam train. It can 
achieve over 100 miles an hour. It was restricted to 75 on that particular route, but it has since been tested at 100 miles an hour on the ECML. Um, it's broken a number of records for preserved steam locomotive operations in Britain, and definitely something I would like to ride at some point. Um, it has so it was running the same route that's also been achieved by the Flying Scotsman, oddly enough, number 4472 in 1968, a month before the official end of mainline steam in Britain. Very sad that, sad indeed. I'm always so baffled why England is so much better at embracing their train heritage than the US. Because we had such extensive trains and just we don't have that same culture around it. I mean, British train lines seem to be trying equally hard to, you know, ruin things with all the privatization and delays and repairs and everything else, but we shall see. London to Edinburgh, that whole LNER East Coast Main Line. Yeah, yeah, so I still need to find where I can actually get the rest of the East Coast Main Line. Um, you know, all the way to York with the ECML and then to Edinburgh with the LNER. But I think that's a project for another day. If you do know where I can find that for Train Simulator, please do let me know and feel free to post a link in the comments or in the chat. If you do post a link in the chat, I will be sure to post that again in the description when I eventually make this, excuse me, an actual video on my channel. Ladies and gentlemen, this is London King's Cross, the last and final stop on this London bound class 365 early morning service. We thank you for riding First Capital Connect. We apologize for passing by Nebworth, and we hope you will ride with us again. So that is that. We will not get a score at the end of this route because, as previously mentioned, this is not a career scenario. We did not get here on time as far as I can tell, so that's interesting. Spelling is hard. Spelling is indeed hard. I see I've gotten a million emails while on this live stream, so that's happening. That's pretty much my life these days. That's fine. Where is where is this diesel train that I hear so loudly? There it is, East Coast Man on Ooh, Let's go watch this ECML. This, uh, excuse me, HST. I've been saying ECML too much. Yeah! Beautiful. Screenshots for days. I like the amount of AI on this particular scenario. A plus to whoever made this. You know what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go back to the Steam Workshop and figure out which scenario this is so I can post a link in the description. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you're curious to try the same scenario that I've tried today, presumably with actually stopping at Nebworth, please look in the description for a link to the scenario. It was certainly one of the free ones as well, so I'm suitably impressed. I mean, as you saw at the very beginning, the description was kind of messed up, but other than that, good stuff, good stuff indeed, anonymous Steam user. See you later. It seems you had difficulty maintaining your schedule, yet there were no delays on the line. Please head to the office so you can file your report. Well, that report is certainly going to say I screwed up and missed a station. I will give this a thumbs up as I appear to have in the past. So, stopped at zero out of zero destinations and removed zero out of zero rail vehicles. Picked up passengers at six out of seven platforms. Sorry, Nebworth. Penalty brakes applied four times, speeding six times. I don't remember my emergency brakes going on four times. We traveled 51 miles, or sorry, 31 miles, or 51 kilometers in the Class 365 EMU First Capital Connect for 40 minutes. That was fun. So, what do you guys think? Um, I'm tempted to say, given the hour, it's 11:30 p.m. my time, and work is happening tomorrow as it tends to do on weekdays, that I should think about calling this an early night, making it just a short stream tonight, unless anybody has a suggestion for a short little route that I could stream out. Um, let me give a quick look at what I have available so we can see if there's anything fun and quick that I could do. Um, let's look specifically at the standard scenarios. Something quick, something fun and fast. Off to bed. I could, oh, I could take a class 360, 365 from King's Cross to Hornsey. That could be fun. I've done that before. That's a 20 minute route. Um, and it has five little difficulty ticks. I think there are a lot of ups and downs. Yeah, that seems perfect. So let's assume we just brought our class 365 to King's Cross and now inexplicably we need to bring it to the depot again to wait for the afternoon rush hour. I suspect for a 6 a.m. train getting in at 7 o'clock it would probably take one more round trip to round out the day at least one more if not two more round trips. Yeah, an hour back to Peterborough, an hour back to King's Cross that would be 9 a.m. 
But let's assume that this train is done with its work for the morning, and we can take it back to Hornby Depot. Hornsey, excuse me. Hornby is something else entirely. Unless I'm massively misremembering Hornby is the model train. Yes, Hornby is the model train brand in Britain. In fact, I've looked it up before because I was looking up the Hornby Flying Banana, Hornby's model of the HST inspection train, which is an HST train painted bright yellow, used for inspection. All right, here we are in King's Cross. Oh, we even get to walk around. Look at this, look at this fancy camera action. It is nighttime, so that kind of ruins my little story I was telling there that we were bringing this back after our morning service, but all right, it's after an evening service. The lights are up in King's Cross. The sun is not. And we have this 365 over here on the left. We will dash right into the cab. Here we are at the cab. And there we are, sitting in the train. It's almost the end of your day. After traveling the ECML all day, you are ready for clocking out for the night and going home. But first, you need to take your train back to Hornsey Depot. You don't need to load any passengers here, so wait for the incoming service to clear the track section ahead of you, then proceed out of King's Cross towards Hornsey. It also seems that you may be following the HST that is currently leaving King's Cross bound for Bound Bound Green Depot. Close this window to continue. And there's there's me on the board there. So we have a red signal ahead. Um, I'm going to edge us well first I'm gonna press and forward, kill the AWS, release our brakes, and I'm gonna edge us up to that red signal because I'm impatient put us into just notch one to get there. I'm get a trying to, what are you trying to say there? You lost me. You lost me indeed. Ah, trying trains. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Ha, I'm with you now. I'm with you. I'm curious once that name came, do you know the answer? Do you know why they were called that? Because that would be an interesting little tidbit. Try and I'm gonna look this up. Try and trains. Triang manufactured garden railway system called the Triang Minic Narrow Gauge Railway, thus being known as TMNR. There is a society of people who still model. Oh, we got the green. Let's go, and then I'll tell you more about Triang trains. Training Railways was a British manufacturer of toy trains, one of the elements of Lion Bros Limited, who traded using the brand Trying Minic Pedigree and Frog. Hold on, let me just be aware of that 15. 13, 14, and 15. Uh, 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 expansion and name change. The, sis, blah, blah, blah. the success of Trying meant that British competitors Trix and Hornby Duplo were affected. In 1965, Hornby Duplo, a division of Meccano, who made, of course, uh, erector sets, had stopped production and Meccano Limited invited Lions Bros Limited to buy them out, trying to purchase the company, including a large amount of stock. The combined Tory Railway was marketed as Hornby, Trying Hornby, although the vast majority of the models was all Trying. Hornby name being established and recognized, Trying was sold elsewhere. And from 1972, the model railways were rebranded as Hornby Railway. So that's a little, oh, let's put some headlights on, by the way, because I can't see a thing. It's unclear to me that um, that's actually, oh, we're speeding. Yep, 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 let's not do that. That that's, they were not simultaneously trying Hornby trains and Hornby trains? Yes, yes, thank you, loud truck. I appreciate it. You're a loud truck, well done. Um, that's a horn. Are we all set? Yes. AWS says, watch out for the red head. I will so watch out. Ah, now it's an amber. Amber. I started saying yellow, then I said amber turned into a garbled mess. And, oh, look at that. Is that a sunset or is that just, no, that's not a sunset. That is just, oh, I've seen this before and been confused by it. That's the um, high speed one tunnel being lit up in an inexplicable source of purple. Actually, you know what I've done? I've actually paused the scenario at this point and tried to see if I could figure out where the emitter for that purple light is. And I could not figure it out. It seems like it's just a random emitter that some train simulator artist just kind of threw in the middle there. Yep, I know, I know. Cancel the AWS. We are at 35 miles an hour as that HST roars towards King's Cross. Holloway down slow. So remember I was just talking about up versus down. So since we're going north away from London, now we're on the down lines. And we 
are going to be on the slow down lines. Uh, we can now go up to 45, by the way, so let's do that carefully because we're still chasing ambers. We're still, I assume, going behind that HST or, well, yes, we saw at the very beginning that it said we'd be following the HST that was headed to bound green de depot. I would say depot, but we're in England, so I need to make sure I say depot. Um, that amber indicates that we have a red ahead. Nope, now we have an amber ahead, so we're good. We're good, we can keep pacing ourselves. Yes, cancel the AWS. I see the amber. Thank you. Got some nice lighting on the buildings over there. I look forward to when we can put Geopipe worlds into Train Simulator. If you're not familiar with Geopipe yet, you should go find out what Geopipe is. Um, my original goal was to be able to put Excuse me, my brain just stopped functioning for a second. Geopipe models. Yes, I know. Oh, that's a red. I do, in fact, know. That's a red. Um, into Train Simulator 2015, 16, 17. Uh, hello, Class 365. At this point, that does not look... I, I don't know whether we'll actually succeed in doing that, considering how complicated Train Simulator worlds are. What seems like it might actually be feasible at this point. Wait, did I go into... That's weird. I don't think I put emergency braking on. And yet... I went out of forward again. Uh, anyway, I'm going to stop interrupting myself by interrupting myself to interrupt myself. The Train Simulator World game is built on, hello cars down there, is built on the Unity engine, which means that our current 3D models that Geopipe is producing will be much, much easier to use in, going off to the left here, uh, in Train Simulator World than in the current bespoke Train Simulator 2017 engine that'll be a lot easier. So that looks like it'll have to be something we'll we can explore in the future. To my rather significant confusion, it currently appears that Train Simulator World is being sold as what the hell? Where did that 15 come from? I did not see that 15 coming up. Oh, this is where it's really hard. This is why it's a five dot difficulty. Um, we're gonna go down a hill and then up a hill. I remember this now. All right, now we're under that 15. Um, what was I saying? It appears that every Train Simulator World game is actually a completely separate install, even though it's presumably, you know, root plus a core game. I'm not sure what that's about, if they're going to fix that in the future, or if they're going to make you basically download another copy of the Unreal Engine for, or is it Unity? I forget. Ooh, I actually am forgetting now. Uh, anyway, oh, that's, that's a red we're about to go through. Oh, that was close. That was close and clutch. Almost spatted. I don't know how we haven't spatted so far. Between not sleeping much lately and the fact that I'm trying to tell you all kinds of things while I'm driving. Tornado is a peppercorn A1 ripoff. Yes, it is precisely a peppercorn locomotive. That is precisely what it is. I don't know if ripoff is the right word. I think, you know, rebuild from old plans might be a better way to say that. But I will also give you ripoff if you insist. If you insist. Oh man, I remember playing the scenario before. I remember that 365 over to our right. I remember overtaking it, and I remember everything being terrible because I kept speeding exactly as I'm doing now. Let me try to do even more things at once. Let me try to spin some Pokestops in Pokemon Go while I drive this train. That seems like the right thing to do. Screech, yes. What you're hearing that screech is flange squeal, which is a very exciting thing when you go around a curve that is tighter then the diameter you need, or the radius rather, the curve that you need for the outside edges of the flange to not touch the rail. So you get that squeaking sound as the wheel rubs along the rail. Now you know. Now you know indeed. You probably already knew. Some of you probably already knew. And oh, that train is pulling away from us. That's not how I remember this going. Speeding. Man, I'm doing so poorly at keeping my speed up to today. Down, rather. This is a particularly challenging one because of this incline. Now we're heading towards Finsbury Park, which we are going to bypass. Uh, let's get back up to that 15. Hopefully we can throw some speed on soon. Screech, yes, much screeching, much screeching. Oh my gosh. Again, once again. We have another, is that an HST? Yeah, we have an HST park over there to our left. That 365 that just passed us has now stopped at Finsbury Park. This guy has stopped looking at his phone, something like that. 
We do not have to stop at Finsbury Park. We're going all the way to Hornsey down reversing siding one. Um, so since we are now in a 35, let's head up towards that 35. We have a green signal up ahead. Oh, and a 15. Pretty sure that wasn't there a moment ago. But I'm sure I'm lying to myself about that. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. Oh, this will work nicely, I hope. 15, perfect. I didn't cheat there at all. I didn't cheat by putting a little extra brightening on. Do we actually have full headlights on? This train seems awfully dark. Yeah, we do. Hm. Fair enough. A little bit more speed there. Still in the 15. Gotta go. Alrighty, sir. GMO, JMO, excuse me. JMO444. Have a good evening or a good night or whatever good time of day it is for you. See you in the next stream. Thank you for joining me again today. And perhaps someday soon I will drive a steam train for your edification and enjoyment. I think I'll have to drive a steam uh, tutorial. A steam train tutorial. So, see you later. There we go, now we're safely into the 40 zone, so we can get our speed up as we head towards Harringay down slow number two. I'm gonna use my lower monitor. As I've mentioned in the past, I use my upper monitor, upper left monitor, so remember I have five monitors. I use my upper left monitor for the actual gameplay and my lower left monitor for the recording. And because the lower left monitor is closer, damn it, I'm speeding again. Sorry, I mean, rats. Um, it's a little bit clearer for me to see. It's not as dark as that top monitor. Inexplicably, for whatever reason. Could be viewing angle issues. Alrighty, so we have our final destination in sight. Hornsey down, reversing siding one. So the hard thing about this particular scenario is just the ridiculous changes of speed limit. Um, we're not going to crash into that train because that train is on the platform track. We are not. We are bypassing... Um, whatever station this is. That I currently forget. Sorry. Right. Um, now, I seem to remember us going up an incline. Here we go, up an incline. That is a correct remembrance. And then I think we're gonna have to cross over and then down a slope. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm actually thinking of a different scenario. I think that's one where we have to park 365 at bounce green. It might even be parking at 801 at bounce green. Yep. There's a 20 coming up, so let's get down for the 20. Oh, that might not happen. 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20. Yep, that happened. A train crash? Uh, yes, the game does simulate crashes rather amusingly sometimes. Um, sometimes the trains just stop and the game ends. Sometimes... The physics engine doesn't quite really know what to do, and trains go basically flying off into space. Um, I can recommend a video to watch. Um, there are many train simulator crash compilations on YouTube, because if there's one thing people like doing in video games, it's destroying things. Shocking, I know. You never would have guessed. But I tend not to try... I try not to crash trains myself. I'm not sure I've ever accidentally crashed a train? You know, no, I think the one crash I have had in Train Simulator was indeed me making a complete accident and running into the back of a, a complete error in judgment and running into the back of another train. I also had a case where the points were set against me, a switching track was set against me on the northeast corridor between New York and New Haven, and... I sort of may have derailed that train. I think it just kind of fell over, though. Oh, no. Nope. I rear-ended a train. That's the thing that happened. I was not able to stop fast enough on actually a very similar portion of that same route. Um, there was snow on the tracks. It was winter. I threw on my emergency brakes. The track was slippery because snow, and I crashed into the back of another train. Okay, driver, you need to switch cabs now to the cab at the far end of the train. Once there, remember to turn on your headlights and then proceed forward over the flyover. Ah, that's what I was thinking of. So this is not quite over just yet. So I'm going to switch cabs to the other end. I'm going to have to give myself some more HUD for that. Uh, not in service. Empty the depot. There we go. Now I'm going to set myself in forward. Put my headlights on. Um, it's dark in here. Very dark. Very, very dark. 
There we go. Headlights. All right. Um, and then let's get going. And our current speed limit is 20 miles an hour. Now we've just reversed the train on a siding. What do you think of the new Marstown line? Um, the new Marstown line in Train Simulator? Because I recently rode the Marstown line in real life, and I didn't notice anything particularly new about it. Um, if you're talking about the new Marstown Train Simulator line, one moment, while I find out what you're talking about. I'm afraid that's already my answer, obviously. Um, I would love to see the Marstown line because I take it in real life sometimes to visit Geek Boy 1011 Train Simulator. Um, if this is indeed what it sounds like, Marstown line. All right. North Jersey Coast and Marstown line. So I actually have the North Jersey Coast. Oh, we're about to speed. We're about to speed. Now we're back. Uh, let's take a look. North Jersey Coast and Marstown Lines route. So, do I perhaps get a free upgrade? That would be cool. Uh, downloadable content. Do, do, do. North Jersey Coast and Marstown Lines route add-on plus the Arrow 3 EMU, which I definitely have. Um, as well as the Alp 45 DP. Oh, this could actually be really cool. Um... This could actually be really cool. Released April 12th. All right, somehow I totally missed this. Thank you, Gabe Bergman. Um, this is exciting to me because as I just said, I take the Morristown line frequently. So depending on how far it goes, presumably as far as Penn Station, like the original um, North Jersey coastline, then I can do one of my favorite things, which is, and it's something I've long wanted to do for a YouTube video, um, take the Northeast Regional from New York to New Haven and play train, excuse me, play train simulator along the way on my laptop, trying to keep time with the train. That I've done before. It's a lot of fun. The thing I haven't done is record out the window while I record train simulator. Overlay the view out the window as a little, you know, picture in picture in my YouTube video, so you can see both at the same time. I think that would be a great deal of fun. I mean, even better would be. You know, being in the cab, but I don't think that that's going to happen with Amtrak. So since I also, I mean, because of current life events that I don't want to go into right now, um, I'm not taking Amtrak quite so much at the moment. Yep, I hear you, AWS. Which means that I probably will be taking the Marstown line more frequently. So if I can dig up my little, little tiny camera that I like to use to record things like that, then you might actually see a video from me in the near future where I drive the Morristown line and ride the Morristown line at the same time. I think that would be a huge amount of fun. I think that would be a huge amount of fun indeed. So thank you for that. Also, I'm utterly failing to manage my brakes properly on this rather steep 1 in 30 slope. Have you played it? The stations are pretty well modeled as someone who lives in the area. Oh, you live in the area. Excellent. All right, obviously I do as well. <laughs> Otherwise I wouldn't be taking it occasionally. Um, I'm glad to hear that. I look forward to checking it out and comparing it to what I remember from my frequent trips to, I generally, not to give too much away, get off pretty near the end of the Dover line. Um, you know, somewhere in that general area. It's generally the Marstown line that I take, so. We're speeding once again. How is the performance? So I'll be running this on my laptop, which is not as powerful as the desktop computer that I'm currently running Train Simulator on. Are you finding that it works pretty reasonably well and not is not a huge performance hog? Ooh, that 365 is going faster than us. See, now you're going to make life difficult for me because I was going to pre-order the Train Simulator World um, Great Western mainline as I was talking about earlier in this particular stream, but if you're telling me that I need to get the Morristown line, and if it's not free, it should be free, because I already have the North Jersey Coast line, and hopefully it's just an upgrade to that, but if it's not, then I may have to invest my funds there instead. I see it's currently quite expensive, 40 bucks. Um, I hope they're going to have it on sale sometime soon. Let's not run to the buffers. Not run to the buffers. Yeah, we're good. Now we're going to have to reverse this train once again. Similar performance to the New York Jersey coastline. All right, that's unfortunate because actually my desktop struggled with the North Jersey coastline near Hoboken 
for whatever reason, the performance is just horrible until you get to Newark. And then after that, it was perfectly fine for my computer. I actually had to step down the quality for some reason, even on my desktop. Alrighty, back at the other end of this train. Now, again, you need to change cabs to be at the other end. Yes, I have, I have, I have not done that. Um, does the train think I have? I think the train thinks I'm at the wrong end. Nope, the train knows I'm at the correct end. Good. Let's get those headlights on again. Or not. Um, okay. I hope this train agrees which way is forward. Yes, it does. Good. Okay. Then where are my headlights? Okay, see, the problem is I'm using the hotkey for headlights, which occasionally inexplicably fails, which is H. Oh, let's not speed up too much. Um, I would like to turn cab lights on so I can find the headlight button, but I don't know what the button is for the cab lights. Thanks a lot, Train Simulator. There's my AWS reset. There are my gauges. Um, I should keep an eye on the speed, not on looking around the cab. I really should be using headlights as well. Oh, I have the HUD up. I can just turn the headlights on. There we go. Maybe. Yes, good. Okay. Let me lower that obnoxiously large HUD then. There we go. Hornsby Inlet Outlet Line 1. What a not confusing at all name. And we're supposed to stop here, so stop we shall. As soon as our whole train gets in here. Notice, by the way, that earlier in the stream we were driving a four-car Class 365. Now we have a consist of two four-car HST units. I definitely will have to try that. I definitely will have to try that indeed, Gabe Bergman. I look forward to checking it out, and I'm sure you can look forward to seeing it on my channel. I would certainly want to at least try it once or twice before I took it out into the wild, get a little familiar with it, do some route learning, get a vague idea of where the stops and the speed limits are. Of course, I generally know where the speed limits are. Uh, sorry, where the, the stations are, having actually ridden it, but the speed limits and so on, not so much. It's always fascinating to me when I ride the... Um, let me switch ends of my train one more time. You park your local up in Hornbury Depot, siding three. You will have to set your own route here. Oh, okay. So we actually have to hold on. Train simulator is suddenly making things really complicated for my for me because I need to set my switches myself. Oh, this will be exciting. Um, sorry, let me finish what I was saying and then set the switches. The thing I love is feeling the changes in speed on the Northeast Corridor between New York and New Haven. Now that I know actually where all the speed limits are, like, you know, I know you get have to get down to 45 to go over the Pelham Bay Bridge, and then there's 100 mile an hour zone from there to almost New Rochelle. So it's really fun to feel that. Um, stop at Hornsby, so, blah, 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 Hornsby Depot, signing three. All right, so let us now actually do that properly. So our train is here. We need to get to Hornsey Depot, siding three. There's siding one, siding two. Where's siding three? Hornsey Depot, line three. Siding 19, siding 17, 15. Um, if that's one and that's two, three should be quite close to us, should it not? Where is Hornsey siding three? Where are you siding three? Feel free to pipe up if I'm overlooking something obvious and you spot it. Ah, there it is, siding three, all right. So this is siding three way over here. So we'll switch that track there. That track's already set. We need to switch that track. See, if this was Train Simulator World, I'd have to get out of my train and actually set these switches by hand in the real world while trying to also not get hit by a train. Um, okay, those were exactly the opposite of what I thought they were indicating. Um, oh, hello, train. 2110 HUN LGX. All right, now we have all of the points set for Hornsey Depot siding three, and you can tell that because this blue line now extends all the way 
from our train. Perfect. And there we are in 2153 LGX HRN ECS. I heard you like three letter acronyms. So many trains. Hey, RC Freak. How's it going? So I just set up all of my switches. You're joining us right at the end. I'm here, I'm afraid, RC Freak. I've been driving trains all over the East Coast Main Line in England, starting from near Stevenage, specifically, um, dang, I can't remember the name of the station where I started. Rats. Um, all the way to King's Cross for a morning service, and then from King's Cross, I'm taking a service to be parked, a concert, I suppose, I suppose not a service once it's not in service, to be parked in a depot. So I just had to set up a whole bunch of switches to make that a reality. As we wind through this late night scene, 10, 18 p.m. You missed it all? Yeah, you did. I, I don't know how you missed it. Should I highlight you next time? I'm thinking maybe I should have a factoid in Pound Chemitech. So, sorry, fruit fly. Uh, we have an IRC channel, Pound Chemitech, on FNET where the Chemitech gang hangs out. Um, we have factoids, which are things that'll highlight you if things are happening for various things. So we have a group of Unreal Tournament 2004 players. Um, if you type tilde UT to, actually just tilde UT, it will highlight all the people who generally play UT. If you wanna play Hedge Wars, it highlights a bunch of people who play Hedge Wars. Um, I think we might have even had a Minecraft highlight back in the day, but now that we have our own Minecraft server, mc.chemitech.net, we don't really bother with that anymore since it runs 24 seven. Anyway, I would certainly be interested to see if people want to be added to that highlights list when I'm gonna stream some train simulator. So I think the whole Summer of Hell thing was super overrated, overblown. Um, from what I've seen so far, it's basically impacted nothing. I think the thing that's been more hellish has been all the MTA derailments lately. I haven't really actually noticed any particular problems with um, Penn Station. I've taken a New Jersey Transit train and a Long Island Railroad train out of Penn Station since the summer fell began, and I've noticed basically nothing. Have you actually done so, Gabe Bergman? If that's true, then have you set that up as manual routes, or did you create some scenarios? And if you've created some scenarios, then I would very much be happy to see some links to those scenarios that I could download and give a try to. I think I have just about all the routes that go through Penn Station. I have the uh, Philadelphia to New York line, the one that they classically called the Northeast Regional Line. Um, I, of course, have New York to New Haven, and I have the North Jersey Coast Line. I will do that, RC Freak Zero. You do indeed know what that channel is. Train Stream is a good idea. Um, yes, yeah, so let me know, know Gabe Bergman. Scenario complete, well done. You have completed the scenario successfully. A plus, well, not A plus, because I sped a number of times. I'll give that a thumbs up, that was fun. Um, penalty brake applied eight times, speeding 13 times, improper horn use once. I was just saying hello to other trains. How dare you penalize me for that? Stopped at four out of four destinations. Didn't pull a net worth this time. So that was fun, that was fun indeed. Take the ferry from Hoboken into the city. Ah, makes sense, fair enough. But I mean in train simulator, um, yeah, actually, to be fair, the time I took train, I took, I took train simulator. Yeah, right. I took, um, New Jersey transit lately. I actually aimed to go from, where was I coming from? I think I was coming from Mount Tabor. No, I was not. I was coming from, um, Denville. I stopped at Denville station, not Mount Tabor because it was a late night and there were a few trains stopping at Mount Tabor. Um, there were two trains in close succession. I meant to take the one that was going to Penn Station. I ended up taking the one that went to Hoboken instead. I realized that as I was getting on, but I thought, eh, whatever, I'll do something different today. And then I took the path the rest of the way into the city. Why do you take the ferry instead of the path out of curiosity? Um, is that more convenient for you? For me, taking the path was better because it left me slightly closer to my final destination in the city. But I would certainly believe it if the ferry was easier. Also, if the ferry is free, that would also be an awesome motivation. Uh, manual routes, that, but you've been mean to set up scenarios. Well, if you do set up scenarios, please do let me know either by leaving a comment on this video once it goes live on my channel or by sending me a message or, you know, stop by Chemitech if you're familiar with what Chemitech is and let me know. I would love to hear that um, because that would be fun. I'm absolutely going to check out the North Jersey coast in my actual steam. I don't want to do that while you guys are here because it'll just be you staring at basically the same screen you're staring at right now. Um, 
on that note, I should probably call it a night, unfortunately. It is past midnight, e EDT. Um, work happens tomorrow. I should get to bed in the relatively near future. So I am going to bid you all a very good night. Thank you for joining me once again for Train Simulator 2017. It's been a lot of fun. Lots of EMU Class 365 driving today. Cross Honor, quicker, easier, and the skyline is cool to see in the morning. All right, I'm with you on that. Excellent. Um, yeah, so thank you all for joining me. This video will indeed go up on my channel. Um, I suspect most of you are, but if you haven't, then please feel free to subscribe to my channel um, so you'll both get notifications of when I'm going to be streaming again in the future and so you'll know about the other videos that I put up although Train Simulator has been a lot of what I've been posting lately I also occasionally post some videos from Minecraft on the Chemtech server um, as well as random things with electronics graphing calculators model trains real life trains and stuff like that um, if you have if you're watching this video you know in the final video form and you have any suggestions uh, questions things that you would like me to try in some of my future streams and videos, please do let me know. It's been great having you all on the live stream. I hope to see you more next time, and good night to all.